The Urban Impact Show is sponsored by Green and Wood Media Services. Green and Wood uses digital media to help businesses, political campaigns, and organizations grow while increasing their community impact. Green and Wood Media is pleased to offer a digital media buying fellowship to train, develop, and mentor young people interested in digital media, politics, and advertising. Learn more at greenandwoodmedia.com. And we are live. Welcome to the Urban Impact Show. Thank you all so much for uh, being patient with us. We have uh, such a great show lined up for you all today. If you guys have noticed, there's been some changes to this show uh, outside of just the hosts. Uh, Shout out to Shekinah, who uh, was uh, one of the OGs in this thing. Um, But outside of the host, uh, there has been, if you guys have noticed, there's been some flow changes as well. So please don't forget to uh, like the page, share this content. We want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to continue to push out this content. And we are live from the studio in Windsor Heights. Uh, This space is available for private events and you can call or text with questions 515-996-0326. Again, that number where you can call or text with questions to book this space that we're in right now is 515-996-0326. Welcome back to the Urban Impact Show. What up, Dewana and Luana? I know y'all been getting confused out there, (laughs) but I talk to them every day, so it's easy for me. Right. What's up, y'all? What's up? Man, you got my elders in the building today. How y'all doing? <laughs> we yeah. are elders. We he are does, your elders. He does this stuff all the time. But you know what? This is the one time I'm so glad to be your elder. Yes, <laughs> Same. I am. I Same. am your elder. You're absolutely right. Get it right. Embrace it. Let's <laughs> embrace it. <Exactly. laughs> did y'all have a good weekend? I did have a good weekend. How about you? I did. It, was, yeah. it goes too fast. but Way you too know, fast. Monday's coming. But yeah, it was a good weekend. Yeah. I, did hear, I did read somewhere where uh, people were trying to entertain a uh, unlimited PTO schedule for corporate companies mm-hmm. along with a four-day work week. Yes. I yeah, haven't I heard about yeah, that. I did read somewhere. You know, uh, shout out to the companies that's going to try it. Uh, let me know so I can put in an application. <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> yeah, you know. Having uh, that Friday off would be nice. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. I mean, don't people do that anyway normally Actually, on a Friday? Pretty much. Just call in anyway. Actually, right, so. right. Or be in the office doing yeah. nothing. I really yeah. don't, don't want to put in an application. I don't, I don't want to work for you. Um, <laughs> I, I just changed my mind that fast. Oh wow! <laughs> I, I'd rather work for me. I'd rather work for me. Well, that go to Rob J. Go to Rob J. Johnson. Yeah, that makes. <laughs> and then you can implement the policy for yourself. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. That's that's right. That's right. That's right. Princess <laughs> has unlimited. Uh, see, see. <laughs> my staff for actually. Those who, for those who don't know, Princess is my uh, executive admin. She does. Right. She man, she's phenomenal. Keeps. If if I've missed a meeting with you, it's probably my fault, not hers, because I probably did something wrong. Yeah. That is. <laughs> Likely true. That is likely true. She is on her stuff. She really is. She really is. Yeah, my staff have the option of a four day week. Actually, no. Oh. Mm-hmm. I'll be hiring soon too. I'll let y'all know. So speaking of, how did we do with the uh, capital campaign? Pretty good. good. Um, we still have a couple thousand dollars to go. Okay. So you know whatever y'all can do. Um, nine. Send a check to nine fifty Office Park Road, Suite one twenty seven. Iowa Coalition for Collective Change, or um, go to our website, www.iowachange.org, and you can donate and help keep us doing what we do, Mm -hmm. working with survivors of crime. Yeah. And providing education on the intersections of violence and and racism. Those -hmm. are the things that we do. Do you know how we doing with fundraising for Juneteenth? We are doing really well, but we are always looking for... More donations at <laughs> iowajuneteenth.org. <laughs> Click donate at the bottom of the home screen, and we are going to have a great event. Got a cash app too, right? We do, but go to the website right now right. because you know what? I don't have my assistant with me that gives me all that information. So right now, you go I to the website. <laughs> I guess that was. Guess we're not doing well there. Um, <laughs> that was, don't you wish you huh. had a time that was good. Wish I had a time machine. <laughs> yeah. Hey y'all, I won't be here for the whole show, so I got to get my silliness out the way now. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I must say though, I am super, super excited. To be, I'm super excited to be uh, on this show with you all. Uh, This, this, honestly, I really do believe that this 
gives us an opportunity to really do some great stuff. What are we going to be talking mm-hmm. about today, uh, Dewana? Today we are going to be talking about autism. For those of you that may not know, it is Autism Acceptance Month, or you might hear it as Autism Awareness Month, and uh, thought that this is something that doesn't get talked about too often. I mean, we have Absolutely. this month, um, April comes and goes, and then we're we're on to the next, but thought it was really important for myself personally. I, I have two individuals that I know who have children um, who are on the spectrum, and we'll talk a little bit more about what that means mm-hmm. later, but thought that this was just something that we should be talking about, and it's something that does um, impact uh, people of color, and it's just something that goes along with the lines of health that we don't talk about a lot, mm-hmm. and so looking forward to the conversation that we're going to have um, with some mothers here sh- very soon. Absolutely. I cannot wait for this discussion. Mm-hmm. This is something that absolutely is not talked about, and I am the mother of a child on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So this is near and dear to my heart today. I'm going to speak as a guest and a host. Yes. (laughs) You know what? I had thought about uh, staying in, but I, I think I'm going to step out. I think I'm, I think you, you're going to stay. We're going to bring up our guests right after this commercial break. And yeah, because I think that would be a, a better conversation. Um, totally up for to that. you. Oh yeah, no, no. You no, just no, gave him totally a good right. out to be like, oh yeah, now <laughs> that just works perfectly. That, that so you're right, gonna stay, right, and exactly. I'm gonna go. Yeah, because, so uh, hi, Eli. I'll see you soon. Yeah, oh, wow. Eli, he'll be home <laughs> soon. No, but I'm excited. I'm going to be a learner today. I'm just gonna listen and learn and ask questions um, to educate myself a little bit more Absolutely. on this topic. And and the goal is always to educate our audience as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, hey, everybody, press that share button, and we're going to take a 60 second break. And when we get back, uh, you'll have Luana and Dewana here uh, <laughs> to help uh, facilitate the show from here on out. Thank y'all so much for watching. We'll be right back with the Urban Impact Show. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Black excellence, black beauty, and black pride. Black power from all diaspora was coincide. Progressive truth and regression eventually collide. May the beauty of the people no longer be set aside. May the black queen's grace continually mesmerize the millions who couldn't see it when looking into her eyes. And the black man's plight no longer be the disguise. Oppression, emasculation, they want to castracize him. Take him away from the black queen, put him inside. Prison for slave labor, he institutionalized. Wondering on the outside, is she willing to ride? Is she willing to ride? Is she willing to fight for the love, even despite the fact that he doing time? Love that conquers all will never fade with time. If she don't choose the love that appreciates every life, his flame might get them any marriage. The Urban Impact Show is sponsored by Green and Wood Media Services. Green and Wood uses digital media to help businesses, political campaigns, and organizations grow while increasing their community impact. Green and Wood Media is pleased to offer a digital media buying fellowship to train, develop, and mentor young people interested in digital media politics, and advertising. Learn more at greenandwoodmedia.com. And welcome back to the Urban Impact Show. I am one of your co-hosts, Luana Nelson-Brown. Welcome back. Yay. Yay. Welcome back. (laughs) You will notice that Rob has left the picture. I know. You see, we're sad. And we're so sad. Time machine. In his time machine. (laughs) 
And with us, we have um, three wonderful hosts um, to help us talk a little bit about autism awareness, acceptance, whatever the term is that you want to use. Joining us virtually is Ashley, and in the studio with us is Brandy and Kelly. Yay, <laughs> welcome. Welcome to the Urban Impact Thank Show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fantastic. So I want to ask, and this could be, um, well, actually, let me just let the three of you kind of introduce yourselves and just say whatever is on your mind, you know, to let the viewers know who you are and get comfortable on the show. And you can start with whomever. Let, yeah, let's start with let's, Ashley. Let's and then Ashley, after you get done, we'll go to Brandy and then to Kelly. Yeah. Great. My name is Ashley. I'm okay. Oh, Ashley, hold on. Just, hold, Ashley, hold on just one second. All right, we're good. Ashley, sorry about that. Go ahead. No problem. Um, my name is Ashley O'Day. Um, I actually uh, reside in the state of Texas, and I have a five-year-old um, by the name of Irie. She uh, was diagnosed with autism when she was three. Um, and as far as our normal, we have every day, the same normal everyday type of living, uh, just in the heat versus uh, in the, the chilliness of Iowa. <laughs> Go ahead, <All> right. Brandy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I am Brandy Young um, here in Des Moines, Iowa, educator, youth activist, and I have a 15-year-old named Poet. Um, who was diagnosed on the spectrum when he was, right before he was three years old, he is now 15. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. well, I don't know, hold this up. <laughs> yep, you're good. That's, yeah, perfect. that's good. That's perfect. All right, my name's Kelly Simmons. Um, I'm originally from Ames, Iowa. I currently live here in Des Moines. Um, I've worked uh, in government services from Social Security Disability to the military until now um, Polk County. Um, I actually have three children. Two of them are on the, are, uh, once has severe autism, my 17-year-old daughter, um, Olivia, she's currently in residential um, care with ChildServe. She just moved in last March, so mm -hmm. we're getting adjusted to that mm -hmm. still. Notice I have my tissue, because this is a sensitive topic for mm -hmm. me, and then, you know, it's very emotional. At some point, I probably will get emotional. Those who knows me knows mm -hmm. that, you know, that's, you, this is near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. um, I also have an 18-year-old son, um, and he's also on the spectrum. He's on the mm -hmm. higher side, um, mm -hmm. so he is currently a freshman at Iowa State, um, so, you know, we're kind of starting to navigate these services and adult services. I'm an expert at childhood mm -hmm. services around uh, central Iowa, but adult, um, you know, issues are completely different. Um, mm -hmm. So it's yeah. a little bit about me. So <laughs> and mm -hmm. I'm in new waters too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, I, I just kind of wanted to start out and have each of you just kind of share um, what life is like for you having children that are on that spectrum. I think later we can talk about the spectrum because I know that's one thing when people say the spectrum, they're trying to figure out what does that really mean. But just want to start with you, Ashley, and then we'll just we'll just go around just kind of talking about, okay, what life is like um, having a child who is autistic and we'll have you start Ashley for us in just a moment. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Ashley. Um, as far as having a child um, that is on the spectrum, it really initially when I when she was diagnosed, um, kind of how you said in the intro where culturally we don't hear a lot about autism. So that initial diagnosis to be very transparent was really unsettling uh, just because of the, the unknown. Um, now, you know, we're two years into that diagnosis and every day is a learning experience. Um, there's not, I don't think that will ever stop. I think that's probably the same, um, with children that aren't on the spectrum, but a child that's on the spectrum, you do have, um, a higher level of sensitivity to what is around, um, as far as their, the things that they may not be aware of, um, part of with being on the spectrum, there is some social, there's some social cues that can be missed. Um, so you really have to take a step back. Um, and the things that you assumed don't is usually how I tell um, people, uh, be mindful of, of the assumptions because sometimes those things are missed. 
So um, as far as though with our everyday, she's, she loves music. She loves to dance. She's really silly. She loves to laugh. Um, so I really, there's not anything as far as in her life that I um, definitely just don't, uh, you know, don't do with her. Um, I want her to still experience the same things. Um, I just realized that it's my job to make sure that I'm explaining things um, as we go. Uh, I just really make sure that I'm I'm taking the time to explain things, understanding that she's not always going to understand, but it is my job as uh, as a parent or as a mother to make sure that um, she's still afforded the same things everyone else's um, day to day. So there's so much I could say. What exactly mm -hmm. is the question? So just <laughs> what? So, so much we can no, say. and it's okay if you if you delve into something more right. though. But just what you know, what is life you know like for you? I know okay. Ashley kind of just spoke on like getting that initial you know diagnosis right. and kind of feelings that come with that. So just kind of that part of it for you, and then just day to day life as well. Okay, so. With having an older child, and then, you know, we got our degrees mm -hmm. and family, child yeah. family services development, mm -hmm. and then becoming educators, it was like, mm, something's a little different, yeah. mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think a big part of the battle was figuring out exactly what and having, like, your partner also, like, acknowledge there's something different. Mm -hmm. So not yes. to be in comparison of the older child. Yes. But, but being a mother and then also the educational aspect, right. like, oh, okay, right? Yeah. Right. So after we kind of put it together with how uh, he wasn't, like, stringing words together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Poet, would you like some ice cream? Poet, ice cream. I'm like, what? Like, right. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So called um, Heartland um, AA, mm -hmm. and they come out, came out right before he was three, and they watched him play and talked, and there was no eye contact and just different things mm -hmm. that we saw with our classroom yeah. kids and and my older son, like it wasn't there. Um, so we were fortunate for him to go to Carver mm -hmm. um, Special Education. Uh, had, well, preschool first, mm -hmm. half days. Mm -hmm. But that was very, very challenging because yeah. it's like he's being put on this bus and he's in this harness right. and, like, his face is looking like he's being punished. Right. And so, like, mm -hmm. as you're trying to get him the services they need, like, you feel like, are they hurting him? Right. And am I doing a disservice to him? Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they have such high requirements mm -hmm. for them to pick up on those social cues right. and to verbalize what they need. And so mm -hmm. the speech wasn't there. Mm -hmm. um, after three years at Carver, I made sure before he went to kindergarten that he actually got with an educator that had a special education background. Mm -hmm. Like that was important. So even though we were educators, right. I didn't have that specialization. Right. Mm -hmm. And so got a, a wonderful teacher, Mrs. Alice Berg, who is still part of our lives today. Mm -hmm. um, he exited out of special education, like halfway through kindergarten, but I made sure he had that 504. Right. And I think had I not been an educator, I wouldn't have known to ask for a 504. Right. Right? So it was like, I used our mm -hmm. experiences to talk to other people, like make sure you have that safety net. And mm -hmm. now that I'm working at Roosevelt, Counselors have told me, oh, that 504 extends into college. Right. And I'm like, yeah. I didn't know. I didn't yeah. know right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it, it, every day can be different. Mm -hmm. They know exactly what they want. So there's not really the gray area. But I think, like, I try to force my gray areas of life. Mm -hmm. But he kind of knows. Right. right? Mm -hmm. So even as he gets older, there's new discoveries, new social anxieties, yeah. and, and just learning curves that come with being a teenager, mm -hmm. but also being on the spectrum. So everything's right. kind of heightened, yeah. yes. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like, I know God mm -hmm. and I can yeah. say, but God, cause he went from putting only two words together. He's given speech at the Capitol. I love he it. gave the Abbott message this year at church. Yeah. So like, I love it. they are amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I can, I, I relate to everything everybody's saying, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm going to come at a little bit differently cause I have two very different, mm -hmm. different, um, mm -hmm. I have an 18 year old and a 19 year old. 
So shockingly, the one with severe autism is the 18 year old. It's the girl. Mm -hmm. um, we all know at that time, um, you know, there, the services were in place. AEA was in place mm -hmm. uh, for my son because yeah. the speech was delayed mm -hmm. and he had extreme like emotional reactions to everything like a time test. A normal kid would finish a time test or do however many they could. And that's it. They're they're good. Mm -hmm. He's a type emotional breakdown meltdown i'm mm -hmm. dumb i'm you know and just couldn't hyperventilate couldn't control his emotions mm -hmm. because he only got say 60 of them done well the point was just to see how many he could do so he's very he was very rigid in his thinking at that time mm -hmm. um i was lucky enough to actually i just come back from the uh, um, navy um so i was lucky enough to be in school at that time and you know i had my developmental psych teacher um the kids were about two and one they're only a year apart mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, I was asking all these questions and, you know, essential um, to getting the diagnosis early, because we'll all tell you yeah. that is essential to get those services yeah, started right away. Um, but is that pediatrician? Because mm -hmm. um, most most of the times your pediatrician is the one that's going to refer those AEA services, although anybody can make that referral. So as a parent, if you see something that's not right, you can make that referral yourself to AEA. Yeah, so make sure you know that um, if you don't have somebody, hey, there's something wrong with my child. Um, so, you know, we had the speech therapy services going on. We had the, mm -hmm. the case managers from AE coming in. Um, and, you know, we were so focused on my son because he was about a year old. And, you know, again, they're only a year apart. Well, at that point, he was about two you know, I wasn't noticing my daughter because she's mm -hmm. a baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now I can look back and look at pictures of when she was a baby mm -hmm. and I see, you know, she laughed and everything and, you know, she was completely normal, I'd say, till about a year old. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I'm looking at pictures of her being a child now, uh, you know, little baby. Mm -hmm. And I can look and she's not looking at me. Right, <laughs> you know? right, right, and, right. Yeah. and so, you know, the, the all the, they never want to diagnose uh, autism, usually before the age of three. Mm -hmm. But I Iowa City, you know, was pretty picked up on quick and, you know, essential get your kids to Iowa City blanks Absolutely. also a good one and get that, yep. get the evaluation, mm -hmm. get that stuff going. Um, so they diagnosed, um, I'm going to talk about Olivia first, uh, her with PDD and OS when she was 16 months old. And that's how, that's how mm -hmm. evident it was. Um, it got changed to ASD or autism spectrum disorder when she was three. Mm -hmm. Um, and you, I knew right away, um, the shoes would be missing when she started crawling. Um, mm -hmm. so shoes would be missing and they'd be patterned so pattern mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. yep. about the yeah. pattern. toothbrushes <laughs> to this day yeah. um like i have to hide our toothbrushes to this day she's 18 years old um because she's she's really obsessed with those and those are laid in patterns it'd be a cross pattern a line pattern everything was lined up mm -hmm. um so with her like life has been i'm not i'm not gonna sugarcoat it's been hard Mm -hmm. um she she wanders uh she has no sense of safety mm -hmm. she's 18 years old um she's still in a brief uh she she's not potty trained um and it's not because she she can't feel the sensation of like yeah. urine coming right. until it actually comes uh very very aggressive uh, self-injury um behavior um but she's the smartest person i know she's probably mm -hmm. the smartest one of my three kids uh, she's has savant characteristics, uh, which has been making keeping her in the house challenging. We now mm -hmm. lock it from the inside mm -hmm. um, because, you know, uh, the best what a savant characteristic is, is extraordinary ability. So like in Rain Man, he dropped the toothpicks, oh, yeah. knew how many there was on the floor mm -hmm. right then. Olivia can hear any tone, any song, um, anything and sing it in perfect pitch, uh, hum it in perfect wow. pitch. That's amazing. Yeah. Which is bad though. <laughs> <laughs> because, She'll sing, I wish I had a time machine. <laughs> well, remember that she, she uh, with the alarm system, she doesn't have any sense of safety, and mm -hmm. autistic people have a tendency to be drawn to water for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so that alarm system, when you punch the, the code, each button makes a sound. So she learned how to bypass the alarm system. Mm -hmm. um, Olivia's been missing probably about... 12 times in her mm -hmm. childhood child serve even lost her because um, mm -hmm. they're very smart and she but mm -hmm. they, they they have that sense of wonder and that's what she wants to do um, but the point is she can't yeah. tell you you know where mm -hmm. she's from right. so you know we it's it's been a struggle um, it, it's been a struggle I just I there's no other way for me to say that mm -hmm. um, 
with the other one, it's just transitions are huge for him. Mm -hmm. Um, I had to teach him early to embrace his disability, um, Mm -hmm. not hide it. Um, you know, if you need help, you need help. It's no different than me taking my high blood pressure medicine every day. Um, so with him, it's transitioning. Mm -hmm. Um, every time he went to different elementary school Mm -hmm. or middle school, he'd usually be hospitalized uh, Mm -hmm. with the depression and the anxiety that comes with it. Mm -hmm. Um, it wasn't, we didn't really have a breakthrough till, uh, seventh grade. He found wrestling. Mm -hmm. Um, and that actually kind of changed his life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I never been so proud of him. He stood up that first practice. Um, he's at, was at Southeast Polk and told his teammates, um, I haven't, you know, I told him about his autism. I have anxiety. So if you see me freaking out, like, please don't think I'm weird. I'm just, you know, and I was mm-hmm. like, I was kind of mortified, like, oh my God, are they going to make yeah. fun of him? <laughs> but honestly, um, the whole team literally embraced him mm-hmm. and yeah. they, you know, they learned how th- different people stepped up. Mm-hmm. The coaches stepped up because you could, you know, there's very telltale signs of that. Um, even, um, in, you know, with the transition to college has, you know, it started off as rough as yeah. I expected it. Um, mm-hmm. we did end up hospitalized this, this fall. Um, and you know, I talked to CJ to make sure that he was good with me, you know, um, saying this information. And he said he, you know, is very transparent about his disability because if he's feels like if it helps somebody else, mm-hmm. um, you know, he said, go ahead and talk about it. Yeah. And so he was hospitalized again because, you know, those services weren't in place. The 504 oh, plan yeah. that it translates right. into, um, he, he, you know, it's, been kind of a struggle because he didn't want to be different. So he didn't want to ask for those services. He's very, mm-hmm, very right. bright. Um, but, you know, then he realized you have to, it's c- constantly reinforcing that you, you need it. It's no yes. different than anything else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, yeah. Right. Oh my gosh. There was so much packed into yeah, I was, everything yeah. Yeah. Three of you said <laughs> that I'm like mentally like, oh, that's a note. Oh, that's a note. Right. I know. I'm like, we need more time. Right. I'm like, right. it's, right. it's exactly. so much information. Yes. There is one thing though that I picked up um, very strong that I think goes to what you were mentioning mm-hmm. earlier, which is the spectrum. Yeah. In yeah. the three of your um, stories, you heard the spectrum yeah. come out, right? From your son, daughter? Son. Son, mm-hmm. right, poet. High functioning, yep. Who's Yeah, what we would call high functioning, yeah. who now gives speeches at right. the Capitol mm-hmm. to my and your, well, I didn't tell y'all about mine, but (laughs) our older children who, you know, still struggle with, you know, the potty training and the, you Mm -hmm. know, it is a spectrum disease Mm -hmm. and, or, um, condition rather. And I think sometimes, and y'all can chime in with me and if you agree, um, I think sometimes people who don't experience autism at Mm -hmm. all on a personal basis don't understand that you know and so they come at us sometimes with I know my friends and God bless them they'll give me stories about you know the kid with autism who went to college which Mm -hmm. is great Mm -hmm. you know but may not be where my child falls on the spectrum so what are your y'all's thoughts around the spectrum and and what that's like I think it's like with every person like Dewan and I are forever talking about throwing out the cookie cutter idea. Mm-hmm. So even us that are not on the spectrum, but yeah. maybe we actually are, right? In right. some way. <laughs> right. And so like poet's newest shirt is autism is the new normal. Like, well, for right. us it, it for us it is normal, right? Right. And there's always transitioning, but I think it's just continuing to tell the stories and speak up for them Mm -hmm. as they are learning to speak up for themselves. So when like we're hearing these stories of like the kids that can't go to college, even though poet like may be on that path, he may choose not to because the anxiety of it is too much and the changes of it too much and not being able to be away from home is too much. Mm -hmm. But can he go do other things? Absolutely. He makes video games like he can cold and stuff from the basement. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think it's just like, acknowledging those stories that people are telling us, but Mm -hmm. standing firm in our belief and um, support of our children and where they're at currently and knowing that they can possibly grow and change, but just like, yeah, okay, I hear that. Mm -hmm. However, back at home, this is what we're dealing with. Exactly. So we're the experts. Right. We are the experts. So 15 year old that can give a speech though, like I have to remind them, did you wash your face today? Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I thought I heard Ashley try to chime in a little bit. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say that it. It's oh, not, hold, hold on, Ashley, just a second. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Um, but no, I was just going to kind of echo the same things. Um, just that it's called a spectrum because it truly is, there is not one single diagnosis. There is not one characteristic. There is not one type of autism. Um, as you see between the four of us, there is such a wide variety, but yet even still with that, there's so many more that, um, you know, that, that can be, you know, you have some, so my daughter, even though she's five, she um, also has a language disorder, which is common with um, children that have autism up into adulthood. Um, you know, you do have some that are nonverbal, but then you have some that do have savant-like qualities that can um, remember things that you would never think of. Um, but it, it, I always tell people, definitely understand that when it's a spectrum, there is no right response. There is no, just like no child is born with, with a handbook, as we always say, autism isn't either. Even to the, you know, to the physicians, the specialists, oftentimes I, um, you know, I really stay in contact with all of my daughter's healthcare providers and her team of therapists. And we actually bounce off of each other, especially at her age. They're asking me, like, do you notice that she does this or um, do you know why she maybe does this? You know, they're asking questions because there is no answer. You know, there's no right answer. It's just who your child is. And so that's for me, I think that is um, I am very which I think probably the other moms in the studio are the same. You are protective because it's like there's a whole world that people aren't aware of that we have to be conscious of 24 hours a day. And so with that, it's, I mean, to me, um, you know, I find it, I'm just happy that God thought I was good enough to even do it. So in saying that, I take the job seriously as a mother, but then I also, you know, obviously I'm going to be protective, but I do wish that sometimes people did recognize that the stories are nice and we love the, you know, we like the rain, uh, to hear those rain man type stories as people will give, but that's not it. <laughs> what the, what the theater portray autism as and what you see in TV shows, um, be it big bang theory and all of those, those are all great. That is not all of it though. Okay, thoughts? Um, yeah, you know, with my two kids, um, you know, recently, not even recently, you know, it was not till CJ was older that we, you know, even in my family, even shared the fact that he was autistic. Mm -hmm. What we discovered early on, um, everybody was so, so focused on, you know, Olivia's level of autism. Mm -hmm. They would talk to CJ, like, slow, because my daughter's right. mostly mm -hmm. nonverbal. So, you know, we... He, we didn't share it really until he was comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, you know, so, and especially, um, you know, I think it tends to be more people that are familiar with the high functioning mm -hmm. autism. Yeah. You, have you tried this, this, well, you should take her to play this, yeah. this, this. Yeah. We can't do that with Olivia. Well, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Um, I take her to Chuck E. Cheese and, you know, she's going to beat somebody up, but they come, mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm in the store with her and something doesn't go correctly. She's trying to rip a shelf off the, that's mm -hmm. happened. I don't know how many times I'm still traumatized, but, you know, we have to keep at it. Um, mm -hmm. I think right. all of you will understand. Well, all of you will agree with me when I say, um, you know, you are their voice. So Absolutely. you, you have to. You, I, I, I was a nice person. I was quiet. Um, that kind of made you just become yep. a lion because yep. um, everybody does the best that mm -hmm. they can with what they have. But you have to make them aware of the law. True. One, um, yeah. <laughs> you have to exactly. make them follow their IEP too. Yep. Um, yeah. You know, they, they try to, uh, you know, uh, God bless the schools and I, God bless every single special education teacher um, and their associates because, you know, most of them are angels. They don't get paid much right. and they do right. a very, very hard job. Right. But. <laughs> <laughs> the schools will also try to, and I, you know, we've been in Nevada, we've been in Ames, uh, we've been in Des Moines before, mm -hmm. and, and we've been in Southeast Polk. Um, all of them will try to fit your child into their program. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You're mm -hmm. not going to fit my child into right. your program. 
you're going to do what her program says. Exactly. And whether you need to consult a special education attorney, which mm-hmm. I do have referred multiple people um, in the past, the teachers, you know, they're kind of stuck in a rock and a hard place sometimes yeah. because they have to deal with administration. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't know how many side conversations I've had with teachers. Um, like, can you re- can you help this family out? But mm-hmm. don't be afraid to use your voice. And please just understand that you're not there to be anybody's friend. You're right. there to be the yeah. voice of your child. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Of course. <laughs> I want to let Dewana, if you have, I'm just looking at the, my phone because I know oh. our time is getting, mm-hmm. it's coming, winding down <laughs> yeah. to an end. And so yeah. I want to keep the conversation going. But what I want to give each one of you some time to do is just give some final thoughts. If there's something that you want people to know, um, if there's some, if there's even someone who is suspecting, you know, because sometimes we suspect something's Mm -hmm. going on with our kids, but Mm -hmm. maybe they're young and you're thinking, okay, maybe they'll just grow out of it or things will change or maybe they're noticing some things, even giving them some encouragement or that push um, to seek some help. I want to give each of you about a minute or so for each one of you just to kind of speak on anything you would want to say. And then also I want you all to come back again because this is, we We didn't even even dig deep into anything. We probably scratched the top of things. We didn't even (laughs) dig deep. So I want to invite you all back. And so Madison will get in contact with you all to come back because I really think this is a conversation that needs to be had for many reasons, but also because, you know, the, Our kids go to school with, you know, others who are identified Mm -hmm. as being autistic. And I think there's learning things that come from how do you treat individuals and how do we care for one another and how are Mm -hmm. we understanding and not just people in school, but adults, too, you know, Mm -hmm. who say the wrong things or, you know, don't always do things in the right way. So we will have a part two to this conversation, Um, but just want to give you all time, just a minute each to just kind of share some lasting thoughts. And so just a moment, Ashley, we will start with you and then we'll go to Brandy and then Kelly. Um, As far as with the diagnosis and especially like those that may be thinking that their child is showing some signs, um, in all honesty, the the testing for autism can tell you so many things. So maybe the child doesn't have autism, but there might be something else that you're doing yourself a disservice to not, you're doing yourself and the child a disservice to not at least look into it. Um, They may tell you that, oh, nope, it's just, they're right at that age where they do this, that, and the other. That's fine. At least you've become informed. But I always tell people don't, the assumption is disservicing to you and your child. I mean, just to be honest, um, and it's not something that is an end all where it's like, no, there's resources out there, but I will probably, you know, the other lady said the say other ladies have said the same thing. You have to be on it. Um, the services culturally, we just don't hear about children with autism. We're usually told that it's something else that is more behavioral. Um, and um, I know the other ladies said the same thing. I was not before the that that role even started because I knew my child, you know, she did have, she was delayed as far as in her speaking. I wanted to make sure that, okay, what resources do I have? So I did a lot of research, um, but I hold her providers to a T. Um, I don't let them slack because I'm not allowed to slack. So if there's a resource out there, I want to know about it. So the, you know, just with autism in general, there's so much more to learn. Granted, yes, ask questions, but don't assume that the child is just always acting out just because sometimes they're they're very sensitive to sound, smells, um, lighting. You know, sometimes in a store you might hear a child screaming their head off. If they have autism, the light, they can hear the lights, you know. So those type of things, it's like you oftentimes, um, my daughter will wear, she wears um, protective earmuffs when we travel because it's something that the, she can hear the air in the, in the airplane. And Um, So, you know, those type of things before you make that judgment call of, oh, that child just needs, you know, needs a whooping or something like that. Take a step back and really and see like, okay, let me make sure I'm crossing all the T's and dotting the I's before you, you know, just cast a child to, you know, to the side. (laughs) Brandy. I think um, 
being brave enough to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. you, you, you might have your assumptions, mm -hmm. you get that gut feeling, but ask the questions, mm -hmm. do the research, talk to the professionals. Um, and even after we did all that, it's still a continual journey to get poet the services he needs and the help he needs. Mm -hmm. He sees Brian Ward, that's his therapist. Mm -hmm. And it got to the point that it checked itself out. Mm -hmm. But now back in high school, he's had to check himself back in with her, right? right. And so like right. we hit these milestones and I let him know, it's okay if we have to take a step back right. and like readjust. Mm -hmm. And yeah. just, you know, whomever is gonna be part of your village, like I wouldn't have made it through without my mother, mm -hmm. Vivian yeah. Bryson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She ended up at one point <laughs> Stepped out on faith, opened up her own daycare. Mm -hmm. And my son is right there, right? Mm -hmm. And he was with Monica Controls for mm -hmm. a while. And you, you just have to know the right people. So important. And ask those questions, have the conversations, be honest about what you need for your children. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So I want to speak actually a little bit to the services. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of, you know, as in that African American, black, and brown community, we're not, we're, we don't want our children labeled. Yeah. And I want to, mm -hmm. like, really, um, discourage people from having that, you know, be the reason your child's delayed in mm -hmm. getting their diagnosis. Right. Um, but I also want to, people need to know the resources available. Like yeah. the, my daughter's on the ID waiver. It's called the MR waiver. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Before, previously, now it's called the ID waiver. Um, they also have the ill and handicap waiver. waiver. But, you know, when she was uh, diagnosed was way back in 2003, there was like a 28 day waiting list. Mm, yeah. Now it's, they tell me over two years now. Mm, um, wow. You know, um, if people are hesitant. This is one thing I do want to speak to is that people are hesitant to, a lot of people don't realize that their kids that they have marked in, uh, um, marked uh, restrictions or um, they're eligible for social security disability. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I want to speak to that because I was in program uh, integrity for them for 14 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of people are hesitant to apply for that. Oh, well, we don't need it. I've heard stories about overpayment or whatever. I encourage anybody if they have questions about that to, you know, find me on Facebook, call mm -hmm. me, do like reach out because I train the examiners yeah. and the doctors in that building. Um, don't be hesitant for that uh, because, you know, one thing that is great with the waiver services and with Social Security Disability, you get Medicaid with it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That is huge mm -hmm. because the cost of this is ridiculously crazy. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's just everybody's like, why do you work so much? That's why. Um, mm -hmm. Her medications, $3,000 a month. Insurance is crazy. They want to mm -hmm. deny stuff. They want to allow it. Um, you know, so really uh, dig into that. Um, and also uh, hold your case managers accountable. Mm -hmm. I I can't yes. say that enough. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, everybody that is on a waiver, they, they have a case manager. These case managers, uh, some of them are just plain lazy and they do mm -hmm. not do their jobs. It's true. Complain, 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 and complain. Because <laughs> I got three people probably fired until I got one that was just amazing. And, you know, we finally got <laughs> Olivia and in, in where she needed to be. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, make sure you hold those case managers accountable. I, you know, they make them do more than their monthly work. If you don't have the amount of respite or the amount yeah. of services that yes. you need, yeah. make them get you more. Mm -hmm. um, make make yes. them get those authorizations yes. in. If you can't apply in placement, it's not just your job. That's what they're getting paid for to make them do their job. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Ooh, Kelly, every time you speak, <laughs> I tell you what, it just resonates through my whole body, okay? Every time. I would echo everything that you all said. And, you know, now I'll speak as a parent. Mm -hmm. um, the services part for me has been the most challenging thing. And I am, you know, I have a master's degree. I am over 50 years old. I have mm -hmm. a lot of experience. And the services are always so difficult. Yeah. And so, you know, as Brandy was saying, your community is really important, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so the four of us are going to start our own community right. because <laughs> all of you have said something that I'm like, yeah. I didn't know that, you know? <laughs> um, but it's important, right? And, and with me, with my story, my son's also 15, um, going on 16. Just started track, life changer. Mm -hmm. um, and at age 10, um, I became a widow. His father died unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. So not only did we have to navigate all of the things that he was sensitive to, but mm -hmm. now we had to deal with death and grief. Yeah. Right? And so trying to find that combination of services yeah. Yeah. was almost impossible, you know. And so, but, you know, as long as you have a community of folks who support you, you can navigate yeah. through. Yeah. Um, 
Um, you mentioned the pediatrician earlier. That was so important. I had a pediatrician when my child was three who said, oh, you can't tell anything until they're five. Mm -hmm. Not true. No, that was a lie, right? Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a neighbor who had a child on the spectrum okay. who came to me and said, hey, I noticed some things. Check out this pediatrician. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as soon as I saw that pediatrician, they sent them directly to Iowa City, and that was a game changer. Mm -hmm. We're still with that doctor, mm -hmm. right? And so it's things like that. Um, navigating the services takes a community mm -hmm. right. to navigate the services and holding folks accountable, yeah. Yeah. Um, especially the case managers, which I feel like those jobs should be reserved for us as mm -hmm. parents, but whatever, <laughs> and should pay $150,000 a year. But <laughs> whoops, I dropped my phone. Um, you know, but that's just me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just, I just want to applaud mm -hmm. all three of you. Yeah. And um, it's something that Ashley said a little while ago. She said, God chose you and gave you mm -hmm. the the gift yeah. of parenting a child or children mm -hmm. on the spectrum because it truly does become, in my opinion, the ultimate gift of parenting. Yeah. The way we have to parent mm -hmm. is so individualized yep. to the child. Mm -hmm. Every child could benefit from this type of parenting, yeah. right? It's mm -hmm. like like you said, mostly we're fitting them into a box, yep. you know, or mm -hmm. we're in the store and, oh, who's that kid? They must need a whoop and that's mm -hmm. a box, mm -hmm. right? But the way yeah. we parent is completely outside of that box. Yeah. And if we focus there and made it the norm, it would work to the benefit of every child. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to thank the three of you yes. for coming on and sharing Thanks your stories and yeah. pulling out things no in problem. me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was Kelly who did it for real. <laughs> like, why y'all sit Kelly next to me? She's going to make me cry. <laughs> well, you see, I'm holding these, I'm holding holding these tissues. tissues but we did it, though. <laughs> sometimes you either get super right. sad or sometimes you, yeah. you get angry. Yeah. And, you know, oh, today's just goodness. one of those days I'm yep. like, I, I get angry. Same, <laughs> so, yeah. same, same. Yeah. And yet, I just want to thank the three of you for blessing us yes. with your presence and your knowledge and your wisdom. And I'm going to turn it over to Dewana. If there's yeah. anything else, we are yeah, we, probably yeah, at close. Yeah, we are, we are a little bit at close, but I just want to thank you all for sharing a part one of your story. We're going to come back and yes. do a part two. And we're going to take just a little 30-second break real quick. Uh, Luana and I will end the show out, but I just appreciate you all, you know, being transparent and opening mm -hmm. yourselves up to those that are watching. You, you know, I'm hoping that someone's listening is taking something in, rather it's right. their own child or if it's their own way of acting when yes. they see children mm -hmm. or even adults and saying different things. So I just want to thank you all for all you're doing and continuing to be advocates in your own right um, for your children and for making sure that we are educated and that we know know and we understand and we continue to learn so we're gonna take a little 30 second break and we'll be back with urban impact show
Welcome back to the Urban Impact Show. And if you've had the opportunity to be with us, which I see a lot of you have been, um, you were in on our conversations. We were talking about mothers who have children who are autistic. And it's been a great conversation, but we are going to have a part two of that. And we'll let you know when that's going to happen. But we're going to wrap up the show. We, we went over a little bit of time, but it was well worth it Absolutely. going over that time. And Absolutely. so, Luana, I'll just have you share some final thoughts and then I'll wrap us up. All right. Oh, gosh, I have so many thoughts yeah. right now going <laughs> through my head. There's so much that we can touch on mm-hmm. in part two is it's what's standing out for me right now yeah. is, I mean, we talked about the patterns. Mm-hmm. We didn't really get into that. We talked about right. the sounds. Mm-hmm. We didn't really get into that. You know, we talked about um, the savant characteristics. Yeah. We didn't really get into that mm-hmm. um, with my son. You know, he has a photographic memory, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. he learned to read real easily right, right. but language is still a barrier mm-hmm. right and so you've got this dual thing yeah. that people don't understand right. so i I'm, I'm just you know thankful and blessed mm-hmm. that we were able to to bring the topic out talk about as much as yeah. we could um, and I'm so thankful for our guests mm-hmm. for being transparent yeah. and um, I guess leaving viewers with um, if you are you know wondering if there's mm-hmm. something with your young child mm-hmm. um, Go to the pediatrician, you know, don't be afraid of the label. The label is shocking Mm -hmm. if you get it in the beginning, but don't be afraid of it because that opens the door to all of the services. Mm -hmm. Um, and, And just, you know, even if there's nothing, Take them anyway, you know, take them anyway. Mm -hmm. I can think back. Kelly talked about thinking back, Mm -hmm. you know, and looking at pictures. For me, with my son, um, he was perfectly fine until Mm -hmm. a certain point. He was saying the word light. That was his first word. Mm -hmm. And then it disappeared. Mm -hmm. Right. But then I looked back even further and I remembered while breastfeeding him, he Mm -hmm. never gave me eye contact. Mm -hmm. And I actually thought that was my fault. I thought it was Mm -hmm. because I had another child and I was like put that down don't do Mm -hmm. this you know and because I didn't focus on him when I did focus he would look away I thought Mm -hmm. he had gotten used to me not Mm -hmm. looking nope that wasn't it Mm -hmm. it wasn't my fault we even talk about the guilt yeah right (laughs) (laughs) Uh, and in the in the studio they're like oh Uh, yeah yeah." you know (laughs) um so anything that you notice something just even like that Mm -hmm. you know breastfeeding and no contact right anything that just Mm -hmm. you know take them to the doctor and keep looking for the pediatrician that will listen to you and give you the referral you need, which yeah. here in Iowa, Iowa City is, and, and surrounding areas, mm-hmm. Iowa City is a great place to go. So yeah. those are my final thoughts. I know that was a lot. No, that's, <laughs> those are good final thoughts. Those are good final thoughts. You know, for me, it's always a privilege just to be a listener, yeah. to really take in the information. This is a space that I know nothing about, right. but it's a space that I've watched those who I care about the most mm. have to go through. Yeah. So I, even though I'm I, I'm not um, a mother of a child who's autistic, I've watched people who I care about navigate it. Um, yeah. Ashley used to go to my church, so oh. I've watched her grow in that space. And mm. um, to hear her say, I just love when she said, God chose me. Right. You know, like God, they always say in the Bible, God never gives you more than you can bear. Right. And so when she said that, that just resonated with me because I had no idea at one time what she was going through. Wow. You know, not even really knowing anything was going on with her daughter. I'm just like, oh, she's cute. You know, she's a little baby running around church. Had no clue. And Mm. just to hear her story and Brandy's like my sister. And so, you know, hearing the things that she was going through and just being able to support and even hearing Kelly speak and, you know, you speak as well. For me, it's just an honor to be able to be in the room just to listen so that I can grow. And I think that's such an important part of why we do this show absolutely we want people to learn and grow and know people and have a greater appreciation for all mankind absolutely. no matter what you're identified as or what you're diagnosed with like we exactly. need to learn how to treat each other a little bit better exactly. so i hope this show is kind of an opening to that and Me that we too. can continue these great conversations and so we thank you for tuning in today to the Urban Impact Show. Um, We definitely care about you. You are loved and you are valued and you are appreciated. And we hope that you tune in next week as we continue to talk about the things that not everybody in mainstream media is talking about, Mm -hmm. but we know it's worth the conversation. Absolutely. So thank you again for tuning in to the Urban Impact Show. We'll see you next week.